advance aboard satellite. Condition green. Stage one complete. Control to space team. Roger. Great work, Paul. Pass my congratulations onto your team. Now, I've asked you all here to explain the next and most vital phase of the operation. Now, the space probe is in orbit. The equipment has been installed and fully tested. Lieutenant Ellis? The uh, problem is to force a UFO into an orbit complementary to the space probes. Then we can activate the tracking systems on the B-142 and enable it to latch onto the UFO. This will involve scheduling the interceptors very precisely. We've made a computer study of UFO approaches, and the general pattern is marked, as you can see. Now, Lieutenant Ellis has compiled an interceptor schedule, but a lot of the decisions will have to be made on the spot. Does that mean we have to play this one by ear? Right. Isn't that dangerous? It involves a certain risk, Colonel. A calculated risk, Lieutenant based on a careful weighing of human factors as much as logic. Well, all we have to do now is wait for a UFO. Red alert, UFO bearing 142 blue, UFO maintaining course. This is control, I have a red alert. I repeat, a red alert. Have UFO on positive track, 142 blue. Speed, Sol 8 decimal 35. 140, 139. Sit has just confirmed. It's coming in on the predicted flight path. Good. Well, she's all yours, Lieutenant. This is control to interceptors. Immediate launch. Repeat. Immediate launch. Right, let's go. Controller will be Lieutenant Ellis. Flight plans will be relayed by Lieutenant Ford. UFO maintaining course. Speed Sol minus 8.35. UFO maintaining course and speed. Stand by for onboard computer read in. 00102. 1319 0124. Roger control. UFO maintaining course. Bearing 142 blue. Range 18 million miles. <laughs> 17 million miles. Entering area red 081. There it is. It's changing course. You for entering area red, 084, speed, sol 8 decimal 37. We'll have to readjust the schedule. Right. 
Compute for new flight plan. Right, sir. Increase speed to Sol. One decimal one two seven. Leader to two and three. Alter course to two one four eight. Roger, leader. Interceptors losing contact, sir. We've got to turn it. If we use a detonation here, the UFO will be forced to swing away onto this sort of a course. Tell the interceptors to explode a missile in area blue. One, two, eight. Control to interceptors. Break formation. We'll relay new flight plans. Control to interceptors. This our timing, one five decimal one eight seconds. Thank you, Control. Commencing missile sequence. Firing minus five decimal two seconds. Detonation positive. It's altered course. UFO entering area blue 132. Maintaining speed. Crossing into blue 133. It's coming round just right. It's accelerating, sir. Decimal 38. 8, decimal 39. We have to use a second missile, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Compute it. Yes, well, I think a missile in area blue two seven should do it. Order the missile launch. Yes, missile timing. One, zero, four. Zero, one, eight. Eight, two, six. Roger. Detonation confirmed, sir. UFO veered to new course. Three, zero, one. Compute B142. We'll link up in four, three seconds. Baker. How do you feel? Fine, thanks. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Yes, I'd like that. How do you like your coffee? No sugar. Thanks. Well, uh, here's to 
Project Discovery. Cheers. You know, I want to thank you, Gay, for all the hard work you put into this project. And the long hours. You know, I think... I think you push yourself a little bit too hard. You're doing a fine job, Gay. A man's job, but... You don't have to do it any better because you're a woman. And don't ever forget, you're a very attractive girl. Thanks for the coffee. And... Thank you. Lieutenant? Colonel Foster? Sir. When do we leave? 1800 hours tomorrow, sir. Good. Let me give you a piece of advice, Paul. Don't ever judge a situation by the end of a conversation. Lunar module takeoff, minus 18 minutes. I just come in to say thank you, girls. When will the first pictures be through, sir? Well, the experts tell me four months, so let's hope that they're worth waiting for. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye, Commander. Okay. Next time you're on Earth furlough, drop in and see me. Yes, I will. <laughs> Coming through now, sir. Right. Feed it through the decoder straight into printout. Right, sir. the preliminary report in 24 hours. Yes, sir. We've got the answers, Alec. We've got the answers. Commander? I did say 24 hours, Kelly. Yes, sir, but we hadn't had time to type up a report. And give it to me verbally. There was a fault in the device. Yes, sir. The range and magnification on each shot wasn't transmitted. And just what is that supposed to mean? That means, except for superfluous detail, these shots tell us very little. Look, what are you trying to sell me, Kelly? Well, look at that. Look at that detail. But it must tell you something. Yes, but was it taken from 500 or 100 miles? With a magnification of 1 or 1,000? Oh, come on. Look, if I take a picture of a, of a girl from 3 feet or 100 yards, I can still see it's a girl. I want to show you something, Commander. Now, whatever the range, that's a shot of the alien planet. A close-up of the surface. Yes. And I'm no expert. But that must be some form of vegetation. Some form of vegetation, you think? You could be right. Well, why don't we take another look? Now, let's pull back. You'll notice the curvature of the horizon. Well, surely from that we can work out an approximation of the overall size. Let's pull back a little more. What is this, Kelly? Some sort of joke? 
You said earlier, Commander, you could recognize a girl from three feet or a hundred yards. What about when the shot is from 30 inches, with a magnification varying from zero to 10,000? Hello, Commander. Lieutenant. Thank you. You can relax now. Uh, hold it there a moment, will you, Lieutenant? Magnification zero times ten, one hundred, a thousand. Not the most flattering of pinups, nor the best way to spend a furlough. Thanks for all your help, Gay. Pleasure. Goodbye, Commander. Lieutenant. Yes. I'm beginning to see the problem. 